please welcome Lisa King. Well, it's a little bit daunting to go straight after the professor, I have to say. Okay, my name's Lisa, and this is a picture of my family. It's my husband and my two beautiful children. And we had both our kids educated. They'd both been through uni. We kind of thought we started to travel. We kind of thought we were on the home straight. And then what happened was, one night we had fish and chips, and the next day my husband said, I don't feel that well. And I said, well, you had quite a bit of fish and chips last night, so that's not sort of, you know, surprising. So the whole week he sort of did look a bit of a funny colour and he said, I don't feel that well. And finally by the Thursday I said, look, stop whinging, go to the doctor. I work with children. Some of them have, you know, immune systems that, um, you know, don't need to be around any extra germs. Go to the doctor and you know, see what he says. He'd had been in Malaysia playing golf, so I was concerned perhaps that he'd picked up hepatitis or something. Anyway, of course he waited to 4.30 on the Friday to go to the doctor, and he actually didn't have a doctor, so we had to just go and the doctor actually had to draw the blood because it's 4.30 on Friday. And then on the Saturday morning, we got a phone call from the doctor, the doctor saying to him, well, he actually came home and said, the doctor thinks I'm a bit yellow. And when I looked at him, I thought, oh, actually, you are a little bit yellow. I'm not sure how um, or why I didn't notice that, but definitely yellow. The doctor rang Saturday morning and said, look, your bilirubin's very, very high. You need to go into Charlie's and they need to have a look at it, have a look at you and, and see what's going on. So off we, w off we went into Charlie's and uh, they took a few, we went straight through emergency and they took a few bloods. I went off to the rugby in the afternoon, not too concerned, telling everyone he probably just had man flu, was not worried at all. Anyway, a few days later, so he was in there Saturday. On the Sunday, they did an ultrasound. On the Monday, they did an MRI. And the Tuesday, they did a CT. Um, we didn't really hear anything. He was feeling pretty much fine. He was fixing up the noisy doors and fixing up the trolleys here in Charlie's because he was bored. And he pretty much had no other signs or symptoms other than he was yellow. No pain, nothing. Anyway, Wednesday night, we had Wednesday the 31st of May, we had a visitor and then a doctor or a professor actually who was known to us came in and he said, I've got some news for you. Anyway, he said, you have pancreatic cancer. Now, I don't know what I was expecting. I can't actually understand why I didn't expect it was going to be something bad, but that certainly wasn't what I was expecting. My father died of pancreatic cancer, so did four of his siblings. I never actually knew that it was hereditary because that was quite a long time ago. So I knew straight away that it wasn't a good prognosis. Um, we were told it was in the head, of the head of the pancreas and surgery was booked for two days later. On the Thursday, the 2nd of June, uh, sorry, the 1st of June, they did a PET scan and we later met with the professor again who came back and told us that my husband had metastasis to his lymphs, lungs, a few spots in the liver, and he's, I'm going to say this wrong, I know, his duodenum, inoperable. I was shocked. I just couldn't believe it. And I was concerned for my husband. I was concerned for my children. And I was concerned also for his elderly parents. I then left my husband's room. I thought, I've got to go and tell my kids and everybody else. And I went down to the toilet and I rang the professor privately and I said, what do I do? And he basically said, let him do whatever he wants. He hasn't got long. Four to six months, tops, that's it. So that was a bit of a shock. And I thought, okay. And he has literally taken it as he does whatever he wants, don't worry. Anyway, he came home on Sunday the 4th of June. We went out to play golf that night. And then the next day, I started my research. So I found the professor, the previous speaker's research, and I found lots of other research, but not having a medical background, it's a little bit overwhelming, and trying to find out what's actually rubbish and what's actually real is really difficult. And, you know, like I said, not having a medical background, it made it much more difficult. 
We met the oncologist on the 7th of June. Have to admit, wasn't overly impressed with him. Thought he was a bit rushed, but knew he was the best, so that was fine. Treatment started on the 8th of June. Gem and Abraxine, three weeks on, one week off. After he had his first treatment on the Friday, on the Monday I had a phone call. Now, this, this lady was a friend and her husband had died the previous January. She said there was one thing that she wished that I had done and that he would never agree to do and that was the cannabis oil. So she gave me the number of another woman and an elderly woman who gave me the number of a supplier. I rang and had a great conversation with the, the supplier because obviously it's illegal. I hope there's no police here. And <laughs> but was still really not sure. So every minute that week, I researched and researched. I rang around the world. Um, I emailed around the world. And I had some fantastic people from Israel, Spain. Even the professor actually spoke to me. You may not remember, but he did. And to me, I figured we had nothing to lose and it was a no-brainer. Anyway, it actually arrived on the second day of treatment. Had no idea what to do with it. So I thought it is very much a trial and error and you can muck it up very easily as we found out. Anyway, so on the Saturday after his second treatment, I gave him the top of a toothpick on the Saturday night and it knocked him out for a straight 16 hours. <laughs> Anyway, I finally woke him up, so I thought that maybe it's time to get up. Anyway, he was still out of it when I woke him up, and then he came out of it, and he was very angry and very upset and screamed and yelled and carried on and said he was never going to do it again. Anyway, I used every, every bit of emotional blackmail I could possibly think of, played a very, very dirty game, I'm not going to lie, and he fought me every single step of the way. He was very resistant every single step of the way. Anyway, our first hurdle was the 8th of July. We had a wedding at Fraser's, Kings Park, not far from Charlie's. Anyway, he didn't really look the best that day, and I thought, hmm, that's a bit odd. So he'd been on the cannabis, obviously, for about, you know, a few weeks then. Anyway, of course, he couldn't leave the wedding. We had to be pretty much the last people out the door. So we left the wedding, we came home, we got changed and took his temperature back to Charlie's and he had abscesses on his liver. So they then put us onto antibiotics and he was in hospital. By the Tuesday he was pretty much fine but they kept him there for a few more days. Then came October. That was our very first scan. So we were really nervous. Now our doctor, we wait a long, long time to see him. Every minute we wait is fine. I get that he's very busy, but it was, it's a long wait when you're waiting for scan results. The doctor looked at our results for ages and ages. By the time he turned around and looked at us, I think I was sweating. And then he looked at us and he said, it's gone. And I was like, what sort of... Actually, to be honest, I was pretty shocked. What's gone? He said, I can't see anything. The only thing he could see was a 12 millimetre spot on the liver which he wasn't sure whether it was an abscess or it was still cancer. All the other spots had gone, all the other metastases had gone, and his blood markers by then were also normal. Um, my husband then told the doctor about cannabis, because we hadn't told our doctor, just to spite me, thinking that the doctor would turn around and say, oh, that's just a load of rubbish, don't do it. But what the doctor said was, whatever you're doing, keep doing it because it's working. That was his exact words. Okay. We left the clinic and that's what we then ended up with. That was his little present to himself for his first clean scan. Okay. <laughs> anyway, the treatment with the doctor continued and, you know, he's saying that if everything continued the way it was, we'd be able to have a month off chemo and for Christmas. And so up to Christmas it was all good. One week he missed chemo, his white's, um, white cell count was down, so they had to give him an injection and then we continued on. December the 11th, treatment stopped and we celebrated Christmas, New Year, and we took off to, oops, took off to Albany and Esperance, had a great time, and then we came back. So on the 8th of January, he then had another scan. On the 9th of January, we celebrated 30 years of being married, more than murder, and then we got our results on the 11th of January. All the results were pretty much exactly the same as October, 
except for the spot on the liver was seven millimetres and the doctor felt certain that that was probably still cancer. So he resumed chemo on the 12th of January, but on a reduced dose. The treatment is ongoing, but he now perhaps could become a surgical candidate. And the surgery that he'd be looking at would be a Whipple and a liver resection, which would not be done here, it would be done in Sydney. That's if things continue the way they are now. Side effects. Okay, so the side effects of chemo, he had, his hair fell out after the first round, but it grew back pretty much straight away. But it did grow back white, which is fine. He felt the cold, it was going through winter, he did feel the cold, which he'd never really felt the cold before, so he did feel cold. Um, we had a very wonderful wedding down south and he froze, but that was it. He got a, fil a fluid build up in his legs and that was due to the fact that he had fluid building up and rather than take diuretics, my husband has never taken a pill in his life, never spent a night in hospital, he decided to wait until they were so bad that the diuretics found it difficult to work. Anyway, this is all, before, this is all on the first round before Christmas. Okay, um, he had a little bit of fatigue, but nothing major. What I want to make clear to you all tonight is I will never say 100% that cannabis did this all. We used it in conjunction with traditional therapy and we pretty much used it right from the start. So I personally advocate doing both. That's what we feel has worked really well for us. Okay, what I can say, he has had an exceptional response. He's never had any nausea or vomiting, no diarrhoea. He's never taken a pain med, ever. So I think for pancreatic cancer, that's a pretty unusual one. He plays 18 holes of golf twice a week. Most of the time, he doesn't use a buggy. He works when he has it and when he wants to. And he has an absolutely positive nature, as we, we do. He doesn't think he's going to die from this disease, and I don't think he's going to die from it either. And we're not delusional. We have faced all the non-believers. We have faced the people that have said to us at numerous times, you know, so what's he walk around stoned all day? Well, no, that's not what happens. He is microdosed, so he has small doses more regularly through the day. He takes CBD and THC separately. I get it illegally. Um, I have had it tested, and I know that it's particularly good stuff. Not having been a drug user, it was, it was you know, a learning curve for me. Um, don't ask me how I got it tested, <laughs> but I did. So he tends to take, I mean, as we went along, we got better at it. So, you know, he was taking it under his tongue initially, and then he couldn't stand the taste anymore, so now I make it into capsules. We take the CBD first, and then we take the THC within a couple of hours afterwards. I'd ask all you medical professions to have professionals to have a really good look at this. You can't rule it out. You can't say, no, it doesn't work. You have to give it a shot. Now, as for our doctor, I love him now. He's a genius. There's no question of that. I understand completely why he rushes, because he's so busy and he's saving lives, and also to all their families that give up so much for their husbands to, or wives to do the jobs that they do. And lastly, all puns intended, and you all better laugh. To be blunt, it's high time we put in a huge joint effort and make cannabis more accessible. <laughs> okay, so this was May 27, 2017. Okay, so that's just obviously the one bit. And that was January 2018. And we actually have a new scan next week on Monday. Okay?